Welcome to the Old Time Radio Netcast Network. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be Suspense. Original air date is January 27th, 1944, and the title is The Locked Room. Roma Wine presents Suspense. Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Salud! Your health, senor. Roma Wine host the world. The wine for your table is Roma Wine, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. This is the man in black, here for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California, to introduce this weekly half hour of Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you two of Hollywood's favorite screen stars, Miss Virginia Bruce and Mr. Alan Jocelyn, with the noted character actor George Zuko. Our suspense play, which is produced and directed by William Spear, presents a rather neat problem, that of a crime committed while no criminal was present. And so, with a locked room and with the performance of Virginia Bruce as an exceedingly bright young lady named Iris Lane, of Alan Jocelyn as an exceedingly shy young man named Harold Mills, and of George Zuko as the exceedingly polished Dr. Woodhall, we again hope to keep you in... Suspense! Hello, Mr. Seaton's resident. Who's calling? No, Mr. Seaton is not in. No, there will not be any statement for the papers. Carol, will you get that? Hello, no, I can't tell you oh, anything Mr. about Seaton's it. President. No. No, there will be absolutely no statement. Here we go again. If you wish, or Hello, you're Mr. wasting Seaton's your president. time. Look, I told Very you this well. morning there wouldn't be any statement Good for time. the newspapers. No, not tomorrow oh, either. Dear. I'm sorry, I'm awfully busy right now. I said I was busy. Busy. <laughs> Phew, what a day. It's rather disturbing how quickly the reporters got wind of it. I do hope no harm's been done. Well, we did our best. It's too big a deal to keep secret anyway. There are always rumors, and it's the business of newspapers to pick up rumors. Dear me, I wonder how he's going to take it. The old man? He probably won't be tickled pink. You know how he is. I know I'll be relieved when he has it under lock and key, my word. Oh, good evening, Mr. Seaton. Good evening, Harold. Miss Lane, are you two still working? No, we thought we'd stick around until you got here. Oh, sorry, I was so late. The newspapers have been calling, Mr. Seaton. The newspapers? How in blazes We told they... them there wouldn't be any statement. Well, I should hope not. Now, how do you suppose... Then it... it's not finished? Oh, no, the deal's closed. I have it with me, as a matter of fact. With you, sir? You've been carrying it around in your pocket? Well, you see why I don't feel so good about the newspapers. But at least I got it home all right. Like to see it? Oh, yes. Doesn't look like much, wrapped up like this. Well, there it is. Oh. Like it? The Lavella Diamond. What a beauty. It's enormous. Yes. But tomorrow we start to cut it. And within a year, it'll be just so many engagement rings. You know, I hate to see it change. It's so beautiful the way it is. Oh, there's no money in it for me this way. Oh, uh, Dr. Woodhall called. He wants to give you a checkup if he can catch it before dinner. No, Dr. Woodhall. An old woman. Treats me like an invalid. Oh, well. Anything else? Nothing important. Oh, Harold, will you answer? Yes, certainly. Mr. Seaton's resident. Who's calling, please? Uh, just a moment. Mr. Seaton, Mr. Van Houten. Van Houten? Yes, he wants to speak to you. Oh, um, uh, tell him I'm out of town. Mr. Van Houten, Mr. Seaton's out of town. Well, dear me, you can think what you like if Mr. Seaton is not here. Goodbye. Well, well odd. What did he say? He said he has information that you are here, and he insists on coming up here now. It sounds most disagreeable. Well, I don't think he's likely to show up. If he does, don't let him in. All right, Mr. Seaton. I'll be in my study until Woodhall gets here. But don't forget your medicine, Mr. Seaton. I put it right beside the soap bottle. Oh, I won't forget. I hope Dr. Woodhall hurries on. Dead. I'm sure you must be. Mr. Seaton seemed awfully proud of his new stone, didn't he? I thought he was cool as a cucumber. How would you feel if you just bought the biggest diamond in the world? Oh, the second biggest, I believe, Iris. Not that that's anything to do with it. What do you suppose he paid for it? I understand the price was something under a million, but he expects to get back over a million and a half once it's cut and polished. Harold, 
Putting that kind of money into a piece of stone. I know if I had a million, I'd never buy diamonds. <laughs> Dear me, for that matter, neither would I. But for some people, diamonds take the place of other things. Power, love. What would you do if you had a million dollars? Mm, I don't know. There are a lot of slow people I'd like to help out. Then I'd like to travel. Oh, there are lots of things. What would you do? You really want to know? Of course I do. I, I don't think I should say this, but if I had a million dollars or even much less, I'd... I'd ask you to marry me. Why, Harold... No, please, I don't want you to say anything. You don't have to. I know I'm... I'm not the sort for you, really. I'm not like Dr. Woodhall, you know. Sure of myself. Well, it's not that, Harold. Honestly, it's just that you never said anything before. You never even... Oh. What was that? It sounded as if it came from the study. Mr. Seaton! Mr. Seaton, is anything wrong? He doesn't answer. Mr. Seaton! The door's locked. Yes, have you your key, Iris? Right here. Mr. Seaton! Mr. Seaton. Why, where is he? There he is on the floor. What happened to him? Is he sick? Wait, I'll see. Oh, goodness. Put him on the no, couch. No, just a minute, Iris. I don't think you'd better look. He's badly injured. Injured? But how? It's his head. Get a doctor, will you? A doctor? Someone's tried to kill him. Hurry. To kill him? All right. Try Dr. Woodall. Maybe he hasn't left. I will. Operator, get me granite. Six. Nine, seven hundred. Well... Good evening, Iris. Oh, Dr. Woodhall. Never mind, operator. Come on, doctor. I was just calling you. Is something wrong? Mr. Seaton, he said someone tried to... Harold, Dr. Woodhall was just coming in. Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad you're here, doctor. What's the matter with Seaton? I I think someone tried to kill him. It's his head. You can see the blood. I found this under him. What's that? That seems to be a piece of broom handle filled with lead. Evidently, he was struck with it. Hmm. Concussion. Nasty. Still some pulse. I just had him in my bag. Here you are. And you'd better call the police. The police? Certainly. This is attempted murder. Oh, dear. Good evening. Did I hear somebody say murder? Who are you? My name is Van Houten. I telephoned a little while ago. How did you get in? Well, I rang. No one answered, so I walked in. I wish to speak with Mr. Satan, but I see that perhaps I'm a little too late. Eh? Perhaps you knew you'd be a little too late, Mr. Van Houten. Harold, I think we'd better leave that for the police. Will you call them? I can't figure out how it happened. Harold, you and I have been outside that door all day. I know there wasn't anyone in this room. Iris, it must have been the windows. What do you mean the windows? No one could climb. You see, look, there's a ladder still there. And it took us some time to open the door. There is a ladder. Oh, yeah, it's a very convenient ladder. Oh, don't you see? It still couldn't have happened. What do you mean? Someone came through the window, hit Mr. Seaton, and escaped the same way. But it couldn't have happened that way. Look, the windows are locked. Both of them on the inside. And Harold and I were outside the only door. The windows are locked? Hear me. That means Mr. Seaton was alone. Alone in a locked room. Before we return to the scene of our suspense play, let me describe another scene that might even now be taking place in the handsome cafe of the Hotel Nacional de Cuba in Havana. An American visitor has remarked to his Cuban host, but great enjoyment the gay Cuban music and the dancing gives him. Gracefully, the Cuban host returns the compliment, saying, But your United States makes us a gift that brings great pleasure on many occasions. This superb wine from the choice wine districts of your California, this fine Roma wine. Yes, for a wine to give great enjoyment, it must have greatness of character. And it's this that has spread the fame of Roma wines to other lands. Why otherwise would these countries import Roma wines to be enjoyed as a rare luxury? How fortunate then are you who can enjoy any of the Roma wines, many different delicious wine types, whenever you choose, without additional charge for import duty, with no high shipping costs added to your small cost for Roma wine. Yet here is a quality so high it has won international recognition. Quality coupled with costs so modest that Roma wines are... America's largest selling wine. Why not make your own taste test of these good Roma wines and discover for yourself the fine wine qualities acclaimed by wine experts of many lands? I'll spell out the name for you. R-O-M-A. Roma wine. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. And now it is with pleasure that we bring back to our soundstage Virginia Bruce and Alan Jocelyn with George Zuko in the locked room. 
tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. All right, folks, are you all here? There's Miss Iris Lane. Yes. Dr. Charles Woodhull. Yes. Harold Mills. <laughs> and Mr. Alex Van Houten. No. Ah, now let's get down to business. We know some of the facts, but not enough of them. We know that you four were the only people in the house when Mr. Seaton was robbed outside of the cook, and she was in the kitchen. We know Seaton had the diamond on him when he went into the study, and that someone lifted it before we got here. We haven't located the diamond yet, but we will. Now, uh, this business of the windows being locked, somebody here knows who locked them. One of you hasn't come clean, or all of you. It's easy to see what you're thinking, Captain Hadley. As we tell it, it looks as though Harold and I did the job. But we didn't, that's all. That's all. The only door locked and washed before and after. Windows locked before and after. No one hidden in the room before or after. And I don't believe in ghosts, so the thing's impossible. Now, which one of you locked those windows? Mr. Mills? Well, really, dear me, officer, why would I do the one thing to make it look as if Iris and I had committed this crime? Yes, you know, Harold got something there. If the windows hadn't been locked, you'd know someone from outside did it. Look, I'm trying to be patient with you people. But if Mr. Seaton doesn't die, which he hasn't yet, he'll tell us who did it. So I advise you to come clean now. Dr. Woodhall? Yes, officer? You and our friend, Mr. Van Houten, here, were, as the young lady puts it, outside when it happened. Maybe you managed to lock the windows afterwards. Oh, How could he? He was too busy helping Mr. Seaton to get anywhere near the windows. And neither did Mr. Van Houten. I'd swear to that. Well, thank you, dear lady. I did not expect such a kindness. Uh, pardon, Captain. Well, Barton? Nurse has to tell you that Seaton's come, too. He's talking. Talking? Mm-hmm. Is he out of his head, or does he make sense? Oh, uh, she says you can ask him some questions if you don't tax him too much. Well, now we'll get someplace. I think uh, all of you had better come with me. There's the captain, miss. We'll try not to upset him too much, nurse. Captain, maybe being a suspect, I shouldn't say anything. But if you don't mind, I don't think it's safe to question him. Safe for who, Dr. Johnson's would I want to tell what I can. Mr. Seaton, I know your condition. I don't think you should... Shut, shut up, what all. I was in the study. I sat down the desk. I was waiting for Dr. Woodall. The chair faced the door into the office. I heard Harold and I was talking outside. Both of them? Yes. Sound carries pretty well through the door. They were talking. There's some nonsense about... If they do, they had a million dollars. You heard what we said? Then I think Harold was proposing or something. Oh, dear me, Mr. Seaton, I never realized that you... Well, I could. I was taking my medicine, and then I heard... I heard, I think, a footstep behind me. I set my glass down and started to get up. Did you turn around? Didn't have time. Something smashed down on my head, and... That's all. Then uh, you didn't know who it was? No. I don't know how. What do you mean, how? Because I've locked the windows, both of them. You locked the windows? Yeah. I, I saw some of the ladder up. I suppose it was the gardener or somebody. But I didn't want to be climbing around. So I locked both windows. You're you're sure no one was hidden in the room? Positive. Captain, I think you've had enough. Uh. Uh, yes, yes, I guess you're right, Doctor. Uh, will you people step outside? I, I'll be there in a minute. Come on, Doctor. Harold. Uh, now, Mr. Seaton, what I want to know is... Criminal to make him keep talking. Poor Mr. Seaton, he does look awfully bad. Well, no, I suppose it's proper to feel pity for even Francis Seaton. Look, Mr. Van Houten, you've made several remarks like that. Maybe you've got your reasons, but I don't think it would sound so good to the police. Well... Huh. Believe me, dear lady, my distaste for Mr. Seaton is purely objective. It's terribly perplexing, isn't it? Now that Mr. Seaton's confirmed us on the locked windows, I can't see how the police are going to prove anything. Look, let's not kid ourselves. We're all supposed to be nice, civilized people. But one of the four of us is a thug. A thug who beat a defenseless man over the head and took that diamond. Dear me, as I see it, that's just the point. It proves that none of us could have done it. Well, if Mr. Seaton's story proves that we couldn't, it proves a hundred times more that no one else could. Well, Captain, is there anything more we can do? Yes. 
You'll all be searched again for the diamond. And none of you are to leave this house until further notice. Not leave well, the house. Well, what about my practice? I don't know well, surely it requires more evidence than you have to hold us over the uh, supposed disappearance of a diamond. I'm not holding you because of the diamond. I'm holding you on suspicion of murder. Mr. Seaton is dead. <laughs> there. Can I come in, Iris? Oh, Dr. Woodhall, what do you want? I'll only be a minute. Well, all right. I hate to disturb you, but I'm, I'm really worried. You are? Iris, why don't you try to get out of here? Out of here? Why on earth should don't I? Don't you realize you're suspected of murder? You could hide somewhere until this is all being cleaned up. Are you crazy? Sure, I'm suspected, Doctor, but no more than you. How's it going to look if I suddenly disappear? Yes, I suppose you're right. If I could only keep you out of this. I'm so worried I don't think straight. You have a cigarette, Iris? Yes, look in that box on the table. Oh, watch out, there's a lamp cord. Oh, oh I'm sorry, that was clumsy of me. Oh, don't let it worry you. It's no heirloom. What's that? What? Why? Look. Where did you get that? The diamond. Where did you get it? Well, it was on the floor. On the floor? I just didn't the police search in here. How did it get on the floor? I suppose it must have been in the lamp. Yes. See? This part lifts out. It must have been an oil lamp. Apparently. May I have it, please? The diamond? It was found here. What do you want to do with it? I want it. Iris, it's not safe. Sure, I know. Give it to me. Well. Thanks. Are you going to give it to Captain Hadley? Why? I don't think it would be wise. Not yet. You're not afraid of something, are you? Iris, suppose they didn't believe you. Suppose they think that you... Oh, I'll think about it. Dr. Woodhall, will you do me a favor? Certainly, if I can. Well, will you meet me here in exactly ten minutes? Uh, you are coming downstairs. Oh, sure, but I've got a couple of things to do. I won't be long. Well, perhaps I'd, I should wait. No, oh, please, you don't have to do that. Well, all right, but be careful. Careful. I mean, don't let anyone know you have the diamond, because... No, I know. Yes, because whoever killed Seaton for it would kill me, too. I know it will be soon tonight. It has to be. What? Yes, I'll do it as loud as I can, but don't slip because I'm counting on you and... Iris, are you ready? Oh, uh, yes, Anne, darling. I'm sorry. I'm really stuck for a couple of days, but we'll make it soon. Sure, dinner and a show. All right, darling. Goodbye. I didn't mean to barge in. Oh, that's okay. Let's go downstairs. Where are the others? You mean Harold and Ben Houghton? I think I, I heard them when I came up. Stay yes, they're in the office. They have to to come on, let's go in. Let me be for a few days. Oh, we wondered if you were coming down, Iris. My, you startled me. We are not intruding. Intruding? It sounded like you were having a little argument. Oh, no, it wasn't that exactly. You see, we were talking about... Well, then, me, I don't know why I shouldn't tell you. About an engagement ring. An engagement ring? The hell? Mm -hmm. I didn't want you to know. I'm buying one for Mr. Van Houten. I don't have quite enough money, and I won't have for a few days. Mr. Van Houten sells rings. Well, I thought that was understood. That, that it's my profession, I... I deal in diamonds in a small way. Diamonds? To the police? Is the word diamond so surprising, sir? Naturally, the police would have to know my business with oh, Mr. Yes. Seaton. Yes, I'm sure they would. It's only... You're that... hinting that my apparent dislike for the late Mr. Seaton, Doctor. Well, I hated him. He was a cheat and a fraud. I cheated me. It doesn't sound like Mr. Seaton. My dear young lady, there are a hundred men in Amsterdam who would be glad to know that he suffered. But as you know, such dislike was not the motive for his murder. Well, really, now, there's no need to be huffy, Mr. Van Houten. Well, Dear me, we all know what the motive was. I guess it was motive enough for any one of us. Yes. Look, let's face it. One of us killed Seaton, that's true. But three of us didn't. And yet we're all suspected. I think if the four of us let down our hair, maybe we can figure this thing out. Iris, I don't... think that sounds very reasonable. If Iris needs advice or help... Maybe I do with that. I've found the diamond. You mean you found it? Found, found it where? In my room. 
Dr. Woodhall accidentally knocked over a lamp. It was inside. And uh, where is it now? I brought it with me. It's here in my purse. Then the uh, police do not know, huh? So here I am, stuck with this thing, and uh, I don't know what to do about it. Oh, dear. Iris, I'm... I'm really ashamed. I, I, I don't know how to tell you. Ashamed of what? Well, I couldn't tell the police. At least I thought I shouldn't. You see, Mr. Seaton told me in confidence. But now that we've agreed to be frank and honest... What are you driving at? I don't know why Mr. Seaton was killed. Maybe none of us will ever know that. But it wasn't because of the diamond. I knew that all along. You see, that isn't the real diamond at all. Preposterous. You you expect us to believe that? Uh, Miss Lane, let me see that diamond, please. Sure, you're the expert in the crowd. Take a look. I'll hold on to it, though. I don't care what Mr. Van Houten says. Mr. Seaton told me it was a replica he brought home. I don't know why. This is ridiculous. Why would anyone want to plant a false diamond in Iris' room? What about it, Mr. Van Houten? It's incredible. What? Well, even without my glass, I can see that this is false. There are no planes of cleavage. A very shoddy piece of work. Phony? I don't get it. Why was he killed, then? Well, you see how I've been racking my brains. Here, Mr. Van Houten, maybe we'd better put it in the safe. Oh, right? I might as well keep it. You'll have to give it to the captain, anyway. Yes, I suppose we'd better tell him. You hear me? He'll be terribly distressed, I'm afraid. You know, I hate to admit it, but this is beginning to get me down, Harold. I feel jumpy and sort of sick. Oh, it's probably my fault. I should have told you. I'm not just about the diamond. Everything. The locked windows. The way he looked before he died. I, Iris, I, you feel bad? You look as if you might... I'm sorry. I hate to be so silly. I, I do feel sort of shaky. Maybe if I lie down. Would you help me into the study? Here, Iris, let me open the door, please, Doctor. On the couch, Iris? Yes, please. I'll lie down right here. Oh, Dr. Woodhall, do you have something that I could take for this headache? I feel really... Why, yes, if you think you need it. Is there a glass? I have something here. Well, here's a glass, Doctor. This is a mild sedative, Iris. Now to water. Here, Doctor. Here's the seltzer bottle. Oh, that'll do it. Now drink this down, Iris. Set it right there. I'll drink it. I just want to close my eyes for a minute. And will you switch out the lights when you go out? And maybe you should lock the door. Yes, of course. We'll call you for dinner. Uh, try to sleep. Poor girl. Who is it? Oh, so you are awake. Eh? And how? Where's the diamond? Diamond? Give it to me. Well? But you said it was false. You're not so easily fooled. We know what goes on. We? Who do you mean? Never mind. Give me the diamond. And if I don't? You know what'll happen if you don't. Who's there? What are you doing? Oh, Van Houten, what is it? What's happened? Who is it? Turn on the light. Harold. Well, I seem to have arrived just in time. Harold, you... You hit him. No, he's only knocked out. How... How are you feeling? Uh, much better. Oh, you didn't take your medicine. Um, no, I, I didn't. Oh, dear me. I was afraid you were too smart for that. Iris, I think you and I should have a serious talk. You don't mind if I lock the door? Oh, would it make any difference? Very I little, did. I admit. Now, Iris, just how much do you know? About what? Oh, come, come. There's no need for you to be reticent. I shall have to kill you in any case. Oh, but you can't do And who will stop me? Dr. Woodhall? No, no, Iris. He, he'll be very busy for a little while. The cook has become quite ill. You poisoned No, no, it's nothing much. She'll recover. Tell me just how much do you know? I, I know about the seltzer bottle. That's how you knocked out Seaton. Oh, that's very good. You're so clever. Dear me, if I had more time, I'd be inclined not to kill you, but it's late and I sailed with the diamond at midnight. I'm signed on as a steward, on a freighter bound for Argentina. So you see, it's really time that makes this unpleasantness necessary. You know, Harold, they'll find me before midnight. Ah, but they will find with you Mr. Van Houten. Poor Van Houten, he'll be very confused. You know, I actually persuaded him that you and Dr. Woodhall were the culprits. 
That's why he came here, to get the diamond. And now you're going to frame him with my murder. You're a pretty smart boy, aren't you? Oh, thank you, my dear. They'll probably suspect me, too, after they find out I've gone. Tell me, how did you guess about the seltzer bottle? The condemned woman ate a hearty breakfast. Okay, I'll talk. Well, I knew it must have been the seltzer bottle when I realized it was one of those kinds you filled yourself with a capsule to make the bubbles. But what did you put in it? (laughs) A concoction known as the Mickey Finn. But it felt so much like a blow on the head that even Seaton confirmed my little story. Well, I knew whoever did it would try the same thing on me to get the diamond. You were the one who got me the seltzer for my medicine tonight. But I suppose you saw it coming. Your little trap? Yes, I'm afraid I did. <laughs> you and me, we're just too smart for each other, aren't we? <laughs> and you hit Seaton over the head when I was phoning for a doctor just to make it look good, right? Yes, of course. Oh, I wish Seaton hadn't locked those windows. Maybe you think I don't. Well... Iris. Well? I really hate to do this, Iris. Look, Iris, I'll give you a choice. Choice of what? I have here a fairly efficient gun, but it's noisy and it's messy, too. I don't like to use it, but if I have to... What else? Or you could drink what I put for you in the glass from the seltzer bottle. It would be much easier for you. It's practically tasteless. After you drink it, you you won't mind what else is necessary. What? I suppose... I... Yes, that's right. Pick it up. Pick it up. Now, drink it. Quickly. All right. Here goes. Why, you... <laughs> nice timing, Captain Hadley. The glass wasn't a bad signal. It was nice timing on your part, Miss Lane. Throwing yourself on the floor. You hadn't figured on the gun. No, I hadn't. Is Van Houten coming around, Doctor? Yes, he'll be all right. Okay. Come along, Harold. Oh, this is such a shame. Iris, before I go, I'd like to tell you how sorry I am. Sorry? Yes, about that proposal. Even if it was an alibi, I I almost meant it. Dear me, it looks now as though I shall never marry. Dear me, it certainly does. And so closes The Locked Room, starring Virginia Bruce and Alan Jocelyn with George Zuko. Tonight's tale of Suspense. Mr. Jocelyn appeared by courtesy of 20th Century Fox. Before we tell you about next week's stars and story, Roma Wine, sponsor of these weekly suspense dramas, brings you one of tonight's stars, Miss Virginia Bruce, with a message of real importance. Miss Bruce. Somewhere the other day, I came across a small news item. It mentioned that the men and women of our armed forces, most of whose pay averages very little more than $50 a month, have subscribed the huge total of a quarter of a billion dollars worth of United States war bonds. Ladies and gentlemen, if you need a testimonial to the worth of subscribing to the fourth war loan, which is now on, I think this news item supplies it. If the men and women who are fighting this war have that kind of faith in the future of our country... How can we have less? This is the time when our armed forces are making ready for the final extra effort, which will bring us victory. They need your extra support from extra purchases of war bonds. For the fourth war loan, one extra $100 war bond. Please. Next Thursday, same time, Roma Wines will bring you two distinguished actresses, Miss Ida Lupino and Miss Agnes Moorhead. Don't forget, then, next Thursday... For Ida Lupino and Agnes Moorhead in Suspense. Presented by Roma Wine. R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Columbia Broadcasting System.
Welcome back. I hope you enjoyed this presentation from the Old Time Netcast Network. For more great shows, go to otnetcast.com. Don't forget to like and rate this episode in your favorite podcatching client. Follow this show on Facebook by going to otnetcast.com forward slash Facebook. This episode is covered under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otnetcast.com forward slash copyright. Thanks again for listening, and I hope you have a great day.